My name is Michael Chasen. I'm the father of three kids who are all now logging into school from home. The COVID-19 pandemic has really pushed almost every single K-12 and higher ed institution to start using synchronous online learning. But nonetheless, there are some challenges to using Zoom to bring your classes online. When we asked teachers what they did in class, it was a whole variety of topics, everything from taking attendance, to handing out assignments, to giving tests or quizzes, grading items, even talking one-on-one -on -one with students in class. Yet Zoom really only lets instructors give lectures or just engage in group conversations. What that means is that typically 60% of the classroom experience can't be brought online. So we developed class. We took Zoom and we added all of those items to really allow instructors to bring the in-classroom experience online. Classroom was built on Zoom, built for education. Let me go ahead and tell you about the teaching and learning tools. We've given teachers a full set of tools that they can deploy in their class. What this means is that students can easily access the syllabus during class. The teacher after giving the lecture can go ahead and hand out an assignment and ask the students to write a summary of what they've just learned. Or they can give an assessment or a test or a quiz live during class. Teachers can easily link to their asynchronous course materials that might be online in Blackboard or Google Classroom or Moodle or Sakai or others. And of course, Zoom has screen share, but we've enhanced that screen share so the teacher can take any of the items on their desktop and put it up right behind them and allow them to point to different items on the screen like they would live during class. And of course, we've made it easier to access the Zoom whiteboard. And we've also made it even easier for the teacher to go ahead and push websites to the students. And we also simplified the process for the teacher to play a video during the class. The video is streamed directly to all the students, but the teacher can control the playback. But we didn't just add a bunch of teaching and learning tools to Zoom, we also improved the way that the students engage in the actual class. We took the teacher out of that grid view. Sometimes they were getting lost on the second or even third page of a large class, and we took them out and we put them in the corner up on the teacher's podium. We developed this idea of front of class, so the teacher can say, you know what, I want the TAs to sit at the front of the class, so it's easy so the students know who to ask questions to during class, or if there's a group of students presenting during class, they of course can be moved to the front of the class. We support hybrid learning. So we've noticed a lot of schools are going back and they're having some of the kids in class and some are remotely dialing in from home. Well, now it's very easy for those students to feel like they're actively part of the class with a dedicated class cam. We've improved the way students raise their hand in class. And one of the big things we heard from the teachers is that when they were giving lectures, it was hard for them to get feedback from the students to know how they were doing. Well, we made it really simple for students to go ahead and give direct feedback to a teacher or whoever's speaking during the class. And for the kids in K through six, we allow the teacher to go ahead and hand out stars during class. We've improved the chat functionality to really make it an engaging platform for the students to be able to talk with the teachers or TAs or other students during class. And one of the things we heard from a lot of teachers was that there are certain students that are just so shy or quiet in class, they're afraid to speak up at all in Zoom. So we enabled one-on-one -on -one discussions where the teacher and the student don't have to leave the Zoom environment, but they can have a private conversation that no one else can hear during class. We've also built in attendance tracking and ID verification features. We also have participation tracking. The kids that are talking below average are highlighted in red, average are highlighted in yellow, and above average are highlighted in green. And now the teacher knows, hey, I should probably call on some of these kids that are highlighted in red to make sure that they're actively engaging in the class. And the kids are probably not gonna like this, but we also enable the teacher to have what we call lose focus tracking. So they can actually see which students don't have class for Zoom as the primary app up on their computer. And all of this is tracked in our attendance module, so we can tell when the students entered class and when they left, if they were absent or tardy. We also have proctored exams. What this means is that during class, the teacher can hand out an assignment or exam and they can watch the kids actually take it live on their desktop. This isn't just used for proctoring, but if students are actually having a problem, the TAs or teacher can pull up the student's desktop and work to engage with them and make sure that they are able to address the problems that the students are having. Now, even though I've shown you a lot of great features, the, some of the best feedback that we've gotten from teachers is in our class management tools, particularly the enhanced views or what we call seating charts. Zoom has two views. They have the speaker view, and of course they have the gallery view. Well, we've gone ahead and added an alphabetical view, putting the kids in alphabetical order on the screen, making it really easy for the teacher or TAs to identify and find kids to engage with them. We added hand raise view, which means that the kids are left in order by which they raise their hand. So now the teacher knows I should probably go ahead and call on Lindsay because she's had her hand raised the longest. And we have a feedback view. Anyone who gives you feedback, we go ahead and move them to the front screen so while the teacher is speaking, they can easily just look out over the grid view of all of the student videos and see, oh hey, here's feedback I'm getting. I should probably slow down. I might be speaking too quickly. And we've also brought some new innovative views, a virtual desk view. So the, each student actually looks like they're sitting at a desk. It's a new way to really engage with the students and feel like you're back in that live classroom. 
And we have a whole bunch of class management tools, whether it's tracking attendance or grade books or breakout groups or allowing the teachers to easily find online content. And all of this is recorded in our class dashboard. So we can tell not only how long is the teacher teaching class or how long they're speaking in class, but how long each of the students are speaking in class, how many times they've raised their hand, how much feedback they've given, how many times they've chatted with other students. So all this can give not only the teachers, but the principals and presidents of the schools an idea of the level of engagement that their teachers are seeing across all of their classes. So when you ask teachers what it is that they do in their classroom, class brings all of that and more online. And the reason this is so important is because both throughout this pandemic and afterwards, as more and more courses move online, the quality of teaching is gonna become a key differentiator for schools. Location and campus are gonna become much less important. And so competitively, schools are gonna need to make sure they don't just have great teachers, but they have great online teachers. Teachers wanna take their in-classroom skills online without having to learn a whole new methodology of teaching and learning. Class brings all of these features and more online so that it allows the teachers to really focus on orchestrating their classroom, inspiring learning, and engaging their students.